Kwame, great to see you, my man. Great uh, to see you too, man. What a season it's been for you. I mean, you look back in this season and it's been action-packed, what, 23 weeks and 40 games and you've got a final to play this Sunday. What, how, do you, how do you think you're going to look back on 2021? Um, I think it's going to be, oh, it's going to be a weird one. Ups and downs for sure. Um, just not being able to have a preseason to start with. We were on and off and then kind of guys counting us out in the bubble because we started off four and four and we knew what we, what we could do. We knew once we got our, our like our legs under, underneath us, we knew that we were going to keep going. And this was the final goal to go to the final for our domestic league. And that's as important as anything else we've done this year. And for myself, I think it was just keep working hard. I mean, I never really took days off in the off season because mm -hmm. I knew how important this year coming up was. And I think it's just you see motivation from the outside, the national team. You see your friends that are playing at, at other at other teams as well. And I think it's just competition within myself. It's like, yeah, I can't be the only one left behind. So <laughs> it was it was it's a, it was a good year. Where does that drive come from when you talk about not taking days off? Was that, have you always been like that? Is it from your parents? What's it like? Where's it come from? I mean, for the most part, it's been always my parents, but like, I always, growing up, I've always had a chip on my shoulder. I had to like reduce the chip a little bit because it made me an angry kid growing up. But um, yeah, I've always had a chip on my shoulder. I always wanted to prove the people that believed in me right instead of proving people wrong mm -hmm. so i think once i figured that part out i think that's when i became more calm and more wanted to become more of a student of the game rather than just trying to do things myself just playing my best in my position and hopefully everything works out you played under bobby sigmar you get drafted in the mls what was that experience like for you playing in new york uh it was a great experience i mean being coached by Patrick Vieira, one of the best midfielders ever, playing with another one of the best midfielders ever in Andrea Pirlo, and then David Villa, there's only so much you can say about those guys. And then there was other guys too that were on the high level that played in Champions League and stuff like that as well, like Maxi Morales, Alex Ring. I mean, overall, it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, those guys, like the soccer IQ that you need to have to just be in training with those guys, it was, it was, it was good. I and mean, I learned a lot. I learned a lot of things about the game. I learned a lot of things about myself and how I, I could improve. And yeah, I didn't finish off in the way that I wanted to, but I took what I learned from there and brought it back to Forge. But I think it all started with Bobby and Sigma. Mm -hmm. I mean, being able to develop my soccer IQ and technical abil ability with Sigma FC, it definitely helped me to go to college and then go to NYCFC. I think it shows, man. I think there's this team, you talk about soccer IQ, it's off the charts, right? Is there also something that you picked up with Bobby? Obviously, you won a lot of games back then when it was more development was mm -hmm. more important. But also with those guys you mentioned in New York City, mm -hmm. winners, no? Mm -hmm. Like that winning mentality, mm -hmm. is that something you learned on a daily basis? 100%. It's just how to be the consummate professional. I mean, yeah, I was coming from college, remember? so you're, you're that main guy. Then going to back to the bottom of the totem pole. So this is your first ever beginning of your career, so you're trying to understand how a professional, how to take care of your body, how to approach training, how to view training, how to watch video, how to talk to the coaches about certain tactics and stuff like that. So obviously a lot of things are new and how the coach wanted to play, but I think obviously being with Bobby and being able to get that side of the game, I was able to translate it into New York City FC and mm -hmm. understand at least I wasn't way far back. I just, obviously I just needed to learn what Patrick wanted from me. Right. So that was, it was an easier transition. Bobby Smaniotis is a man that's been a big part of your development on and off the pitch. Mm -hmm. What are his greatest strengths? What do you love the most about Bobby? Um, I love how he knows so much about soccer. <laughs> like anything. He, if you want to know anything about soccer, like you can go to him. You talk to him about why the salary is this, the cap, the business side, the football side, the, about other players, other teams. You can talk to him about his experiences in, in uh, Europe and all that stuff. And, he has answers, and I think that's why a lot of guys on our team have come from the Sigma Academy because they know what to expect from him, and he knows what to expect from us. And yeah, just learning it, and his attitude towards the game, mm. he has as much fire as we do on the field. And I think when we show our fire on the field, it's direct correlation from him. So I think that when you see us arguing and bickering with the ref, is he he's doing that on the sideline too. So right. nothing changed. Everything is. It's from the top to the bottom, every, everyone's the same. So I think it's, it's a real good experience. And he's challenged you, has he not, tactically? I mean, mm -hmm. I see you, you know, often you play 
left back, but mm. in possession you can come in in midfield and mm. you make up the number there. You like play a double pivot, mm. almost like Man City do with the inverted fullback. Mm. You played central midfield this year in the games. Mm. Um, talk to me about your development there and how Bobby's played that part. And has he showed you different things? Have you watched professional level, high level mm. fullbacks to get you better? Yeah, I mean, growing up, I'm obviously with Sigma, I've played, uh, I grew up playing left wing. It was me, Chris Nanko, and Kyle there in the front. And then I ended up playing, I played midfield sometimes with Sigma as well. So like, obviously tactical adjustments, but um, here, I think before, I think 2019, the first meeting I had with the coaching staff was where the fullbacks that you look up to. Mm-hmm. And one of them was uh, David Alaba. And mm-hmm. for Austria, he played center mid. And for Bayern Munich, he played left back. So they were like, yeah, that's a good, cause and when I was in New York, I played center mid with Patrick Vieira. Mm-hmm. So knowing that, Bobby was like, okay, I can use you as your athleticism to go up and down the wing, or if we need to play in rotation and move the ball around, you can tuck in and then be part of the um, movement of the ball, like ball position. So I think knowing that, and obviously watching game film, talking to the coaches, like just knowing where I have to be and just finding space. Sometimes you just move into that space to create space for the winger. I might not be playing inverted all the time, yeah. but it's more to attract my man away from the passing lane to the winger so the center back just gets it out to the winger and then we move from there. You talk about knowing where to be at the right time. Sometimes mm-hmm. moments just find players. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about your buzzer beaters, man. <laughs> What's going on with this? <laughs> Halifax goal, the one in the Champions, in, in the Champions League recently, yeah. the semi-final. What's that like? Um, I don't know, honestly. Like, I think the, I think it's just a, it's a combination of just my hard work and just being at the right place at the right time. I think at the end of this last game, especially, guys were getting tired. I was tired, but I was like, why not take a chance? It's the last minute of the game, yeah. and then. Ended up, and I just the most important thing was just making sure I don't miss because it was on my weaker foot. And I was like, you know what, let me just tap, let me not do anything reckless, not try to kick it as hard as I can. Let me just, yeah, tuck it in. And I ended up scoring. So, and but the Halifax one as well, that was another one exhausted. It's like last minute, let me try to get in the box, miss hit, goal. So, I was like, I mean, yeah, those are those are crucial moments in the season. Mm-hmm. and. I mean, it got us back into the tie this last one, and hopefully we can win it. Last couple more for you. What does this team mean to you? Damn. Uh, this team, honestly, for my prof- in my professional career, this team means everything to me. I mean, I came from college where uh, it's like a place where like I, I learned to be a man. I was by myself and was able to become independent. And then I got a reality check when I went to New York. And then coming back here, I think it's given me the confidence and the maturity. Being back home, comfortable with my family and my surroundings, has given me the opportunity to actually understand what it means to be a professional, what it understands to be a teammate, what it understands to be a brother. Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? So I think being with these guys, it's a brotherhood. A lot of us known each other for a long time, but we all went to separate places after Sigma Academy, right? And then being back together, we were able to rekindle our friendships and we'd be able to be strong, stronger, stronger bonds, build stronger bonds together. And yeah, honestly, it means everything to me. And whatever is to happen after this, this is probably gonna be the best times of my year, of my career. Fantastic to see the emotions. Last one, you've won two. What would Sunday be like if you lifted another one, three Pete? What would that mean to you? Oh, it would be, I mean, amazing. It would be amazing. It's like, if you look at every sport, like Bayern Munich, they win their league every year. Oh, I mean, almost, I mean, every year. Last, what, nine years? Right. Barcelona, Real Madrid, they win their league. Like, if you're the top team and we believe ourselves to be the top team, I think that's something that you just have to do, regardless of anything else that's happening in CONCACAF. I think taking care of your domestic league is the most important thing. And then... It reminds me of like the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> I mean, if you look at other 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 sports, like it's not easy to three P. It's not easy to win all the time. And yeah, it might sound arrogant or something like that, but this is something that guys want, and we're gonna keep fighting for it. And hopefully, we can continue winning more. But this three P will mean a lot to me. It'll be mean the world to me, especially in front of our home fans. Right. Yeah. Doesn't come easy, right? Yeah. Don't take it for granted, but yeah. we'll put the work in and you'll get it. Hey, listen, 100%. I've had a great time talking to you about Thank this. You. You've had, congratulations on a brilliant individual season as Thank well, you. which appreciate you'll be honored it. by at the end of the year. And of course, a great team performance as well. Thank Good luck you. on Sunday. Thanks, Thank my you. man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.